Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're gonna go through five problems on applying the chain rule with trig functions. Now, if it's been a while since you've taken a look at trig functions and their derivatives, check out the video that I have linked down below in the description where we go through all of them in detail. If you're ready, let's get to problem one. We're gonna find the derivative for cosine of four x. All right, our first step, we're gonna identify the outer and inner functions. Here, our outer function is cosine of x. And our inner function, that'll be 4x. We're going to calculate the individual derivatives. And in calculating f prime, this is where your trig derivatives come in. The derivative of cosine of x, that's negative sine of x. And g prime, that's really simple. That comes out to 4. All right, now since this is our first problem on applying the chain rule with combinations of trig functions, let's go ahead and like the previous problems, rewrite f prime with all x's replaced with open parentheses. And here, that just looks like negative sine and then of your input. All right, and inside there, we're gonna plug g of x. That's your f prime of g of x term, the first part of the chain rule. So 4x is gonna go right inside there. So we get our derivative, y prime, the first term is negative sine, but of 4x, that's f prime of g of x. And now we multiply by the derivative of our inner function, g prime, which is just four. And that's it. Here we can rewrite this. We can take the factor of four, move it in front and write this as negative four times sine of four x. And that's it. If you're ready, let's get to problem two. Problems two and three are very similar. They involve the same outer and inner functions, but in different combinations. And that makes a huge difference in the derivative. Here, we're gonna identify our outer function as sine of x and the inner function as x squared. So let's write f of x, our outer function as sine of x, and the inner function g of x, that's x squared. Calculate your derivatives. The derivative of sine of x, that's cosine of x. And the derivative of x squared, apply the power rule, that comes out to 2x. All right, now there doesn't seem to be a problem here in combining your pieces, g of x being plugged into f prime but let's just be consistent. This is still in the beginning of a calculus one course. So I'm gonna make my students comfortable by rewriting X's in F prime of X replaced with open sets of parentheses. And that just makes it a little bit easier to do that first step, taking G of X and plugging it into F prime. And here, that's no problem. We get our derivative Y prime. The first term that's gonna be cosine of x squared, and that is f prime of g of x. And the last step is we multiply by g prime, which is just 2x. And there we go. You can leave your answer like this, or another standard way to write it is take this factor of 2x and bring it out front. In which case you could write your derivative as 2x times cosine of x squared. Now this one was really straightforward and it's meant to be paired with problem three. Let's go ahead and get to that right now. Problem three is not intended to be difficult, but I find a lot of students have some trouble with the notation. 
So let's take our time and point out those difficulties. And here, it's with interpreting what sine squared of x means. So let's first rewrite this. This power notation is shorthand for sine of x squared. And that gives you a clear way to identify what your outer and inner functions are. Notice now we have sine of x inside parentheses. So sine of x, that's our inner function here. Our outer function, that's going to be x squared. So let's write our outer function, f of x, as x squared. And our inner function is sine of x. And from here, it should be very straightforward. Just make sure you're comfortable right here, right in the beginning. This is standard notation in a Calculus 1 course. Make sure you're comfortable already and automatically thinking of that as sine of x squared. And eventually, you'll be comfortable just differentiating this function here as written. But until you do, get in the habit of rewriting it like this, and that will should clear up any of the errors you make with notation here. All right, let's go ahead and calculate the individual derivatives. f prime, that comes out to 2x. And if we differentiate sine, that comes out to cosine. All right, now just be careful when you plug g of x back into f prime, the first part of the chain rule, f prime of g of x. I'm going to rewrite this x with an open set of parentheses, like we've been doing in the previous problems. And that's going to make it really clear that inside these open parentheses, we're going to plug g of x, sine of x, into there. So your first term here for the derivative we get 2, and then sine of x is going inside those parentheses, but we don't really need them there. So we'll just write that as 2 sine of x. That is f prime of g of x. And in the end, we multiply by g prime, which is cosine of x. And that's it. Just make sure you're comfortable seeing the difference between problem 2 and problem 3. Same functions, x squared and sine of x, but just in different combinations for what's the outer and inner function. And that makes, again, a huge difference in the answer that you get for the derivative. Here, this might be rewritten with function parentheses around the x's there, inside of sine and cosine. So just make sure you're comfortable with that. Both of these should be fully acceptable and full credit. All right, if you're ready, let's go ahead and get to problem four, which also presents some difficulties with notation. For problem four, we're going to start by pointing out the main common error with this. And that is misinterpreting this as sine times cosine which it's not. This is a composite function. Cosine of x is plugged inside of sine of x. If we were thinking of this as a product, that would correctly be written here as sine of x times cosine of x. So just make sure you are completely clear on the difference here. This is a composite. Notice the use of function parentheses there. They're around cosine of x, indicating that that is the input to the sine function. And here, this is how we would write it if we're thinking of it as a product. So we're going to differentiate this composite function using the chain rule. This product, we would use the product rule. So first, let's identify the outer and inner functions here. Our outer function will be sine, and our inner function will be cosine. So f of x, we'll take it to be sine of x and g of x, that's cosine of x. And at this point in your Calculus 1 course, you're probably getting comfortable with the derivatives of sine and cosine. Here, f prime, that comes out to cosine of x, and g prime, the derivative of cosine, 
that's negative sine of x. All right, and now we seem to combine the pieces back together. G of x is gonna be plugged inside of f prime. And I'm just going to, like before, rewrite f prime with all x's replaced with open parentheses. And that's gonna make it really obvious for us to take g of x and plug it into f prime. And that might look a little bit weird because we're going to get cosine of cosine of x. And that's the first part of the chain rule. So we get cosine of g of x, cosine of cosine of x. And that is your f prime of g of x term. All right, in the last step, we multiply by g prime, which is negative sine of x. And there we go. Now this is not a difficult calculation, but the notation certainly makes it confusing. So just make sure you're comfortable here, taking all your pieces, plugging them into one another, composites, f prime of g of x, and also make sure you're clear on the difference here when writing a composite versus a product. Now we can clean this up a little bit. We can take negative sine of x and pull it out front if we want. And to avoid any confusion with what's inside of what, let me put a set of function parentheses around the x there. So we have negative sine of x, and that's gonna multiply cosine of cosine of x. And that's it. Again, this was not a difficult problem, but it's a little bit tricky with the notation. Now with this one out of the way, problem five should be very straightforward. Problem five also presents the same error as problem four, misinterpreting this as multiplication. Here, this is not tangent times e to the x, but rather tangent of e to the x. In other words, e to the x is inside of tangent here. So let's identify our outer function as tangent of x and our inner function as e to the x. And here, you just need to make sure that you're comfortable with the derivative of tangent, and that is secant squared. So f prime, that comes out to secant squared of x. And g prime, that's really nice. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. All right, now here, these pieces are already calculated, but I find students sometimes have trouble or difficulty taking g of x and plugging it in to avoid that difficulty, let's rewrite in f prime all x's replaced with an open set of parentheses. And now it's really obvious we're going to take g of x and plug it inside there. We're going to get secant squared of e to the x. And that's your first part of the chain rule. f prime of g of x secant squared of e to the x. And last part, we multiply by g prime, which is just e to the x. And that's it. There's no real standard way to write here. You might have your factor of the exponential at the end or in front, in which case you could write this as e to the x times secant squared of e to the x, but they both mean the same thing. All right, these were all simple problems on applying the chain rule with trig functions. We're gonna have linked down below ones that are a little bit more complicated in combining the chain rule with product and quotient rules with trig functions. Hope you learned a lot from this video. If you did, support the channel, like and subscribe.